Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'd like to discuss the construction of real numbers that is known as Dedekind cuts and also Cauchy sequences. Um, so I will focus mainly on Dedekind cuts because Cauchy sequences are easily derived from Dedekind cuts. So let's begin. Uh, this is an article here that you're going to find in the details section of my of my uh, YouTube video. Okay, and you can read the whole thing. But I'm going to ex be explaining everything to you now in the following. Uh, in the following video. So let's begin. So Dedekind cuts are actually invalid. That is the shortened suite of it. And why are they invalid? Well, first of all, what are they? Well, a Dedekind cut, first of all, is supposed to be a unique representation of some real number. So what happens is you have the Dedekind cut uh, being defined as two sets as you see here is the union of two sets of rational numbers and of course the union of these sets are all the rational numbers now in the lower set you have all the rational numbers that are less than the particular cut so we're going to be using the cut 1 over square root 2 in this example but you could use any number you like and the set R are all the rational numbers greater than this number here in the set R, okay? And of course, so this here is the actual cut. Now, in my demonstration, what I've done is I've reduced, well, I've ha actually haven't reduced it, but I've slightly changed this cut without affecting the meaning at all. This representation here still contains all the rational numbers. So this union here is equal to this union here and nothing has changed all the rational numbers are still contained but i have chosen to work with this particular subset here in other words the blue line here because frankly it doesn't really matter what happens at the end here as you as you shall see all these rational numbers here are really irrelevant because if i take another number close to this number here again all these here will be the same set of rational numbers for both two numbers, for this number and any other number close to it. So the, the idea is that the more I shrink this set here, the closer I should get to this real number. Does that make any sense? Okay. Well, let's see how it works. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you that you can take all the rational numbers with denominators... Uh, six or less and in both in this whole interval here and if you do that what you'll see is that these are the rational numbers you'll get and these are the only rational numbers these are all the combinations of the rational numbers with denominators six or less okay so what happens is you'll have these points here in the lower set okay from one over six to two thirds and two thirds is less than one over square root two, which is less than three quarters, which is this point here. So one over square root two is sandwiched between these two points. Uh, and of course, uh, there are four points here, including the point one on this side and the point zero on this side here. So these are the two sets. This here is called the lower set, and this here on this side is called the upper set or the right set. So L and R. Okay, and what I, I want to show you now is that we can start off like this and keep increasing the number of rational numbers. So it doesn't matter how many denominators we choose. Let's choose seven. So if we choose seven, you'll see that these two red dots move closer to the actual number. Okay, so these are all the fractions with denominator seven or less in the, the interval zero, one. And so you can increase <clears throat> these uh, denominators to any 
number you like. And the bigger it gets, the closer these two red dots or these two dots here get to the actual number we're dealing with. So how does this all work? Well, if we had denominators n, what I've done here is I've shown you that uh, the lower set with denominators 6 or less and the value 9, which means that the sets are divided after the ninth element. Okay, so if you count these up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's where the break is. So as n gets bigger, 9 is going to increase, right? So m is actually a unique number. Or is it really? We'll see now. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, if we can't find m, we don't really have a construction, a valid construction, because uh, simply put, uh, a dedicant cut is supposed to be unique. And if there is no m, how can it be unique? Let's see how this scheme works. So supposing we increase, we let n go to infinity, all right? So n will be this, you know, the, the cut, right? The number of denominators. n will be the number, the biggest size denominator, and 9 will be m. So if we start increasing n, watch what happens to the number of po rational numbers or points on each side, okay? So see that? It just, there, we get more and more points, but n can't be infinity, right? The idea here is that n goes to infinity. And if it does, we have to have a certain m. But n cannot go to infinity. Because infinity isn't a place or a number that it can go to. Therefore, there isn't a particular partition m such that this expression or statement here is true. And so, Dedekind numbers are not valid construction, are not a valid uh, Dedekind cuts are not a valid construction of real numbers. All right, so, um, and, and as far as the Cauchy sequences goes, you can extract innumerably many Cauchy sequences from the lower set, because <clears throat> the lower set <coughs> is just simply um, the Cauchy sequence which has a limit that is 1 over square root 2 in this case. So as this increase, as m increases, this the limit here, or the last number here, will get closer and closer to the limit, which is 1 over square root 2. Right, so um, so that's uh, pretty much it. And I think I've covered everything. And I'm going to let you read the document in the details section. What I can't really understand is how academics uh, accepted this garbage. Um, were they just believing what they were being brainwashed to believe? In other words, were they just being good parrots? Uh, or were they being really stupid, which I suspect, you know, they are really stupid. And I cannot understand how, for so long, this absolute nonsense has uh, been peddled in real analysis and university courses worldwide. Dedekind was an absolute idiot. Did you hear me say that? Dedekind was an idiot. And if you follow or believe in what Dedekind says, that makes you dot 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 you can fill that blank in how's that well i hope this is the last time i'll have to deal with the garbage or the proverbial bag that this moron has handed down to me i don't think i'll have time to clean up all the mess in mainstream mathematics but i'll definitely give it a try this is the new calculus channel and my name is john gabriel till next time goodbye